art friends, it's Mrs. Price here. I just wanted to pop in with a quick tutorial to help you get started on your Aboriginal dot art. So hopefully by now you've been able to take our virtual vacation to Australia to see where it all got started. And then our focus of this week is going to be what we just went through with our slides and then also creating our outline um, for what we're going to do with the dot art itself. And that will be finished up next week. And then what will happen is next week, I will put in the add response button, the green button, and then you'll be able to upload a picture of your finished work. So there's no rush. And again, the focus is just this week getting our outline set up. Okay, so that's what we'll do for this week. So to get us started, I just wanted to share with you, um, there's a slide, as you can see, that has the outlines of Australian animals. And so your job is to please choose one, choose one that you like the most. And what we're gonna do is we're going to look at the outline. And sometimes it could be a little bit of a challenge to draw an outline freehand or not trace it. So one tip I'm going to give to you is that in every outline, especially with animals, everything breaks down into a smaller um, shape. So that's what we're going to look at today, and I'll even show you that in my artwork. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I worked in Sharpie, and my my goal was to do a lizard, and it didn't totally work out as planned. I ended up creating a little more of a platypus because I made the face shape a little wider and more like a bill than the mouth of a lizard. And actually, that worked out okay um, since it was another type of animal that we can use for this project. So I went with it. So I would recommend working with pencil. That way you can do, you know, small lines, you could do sketch lines, and then that way you can take your time and not feel like you have to rush or that there's any mistakes involved because obviously any mistake can be turned into something that works, okay? So I experienced that myself with this project. So to get you started, here's an example of my lizard turned platypus. And I just wanted to kind of give you some guidelines or some ideas on how I set this up. So. I made a triangle shape down here that comes to a point. Then I almost did like a rainbow right here, as you can see, two curved lines. And then I did a couple more curved lines, almost like mini rainbow shapes. And then some small half circle shapes to make those toes. And then I kind of worked my way up. I made an open oval here. You know, I didn't connect all the way around. And I just made a couple more oval type shapes here. And this is where you can see I made my bill instead of the little um, lizard mouth. And then what I did was I was looking back on my toes. At first, I wanted them to be a little bit more of the same. Um, but as I'm looking at it, it looks more like he's kind of on the move, which I ended up liking. So I'm going to leave it that way. So again, when you look at the outline of the animal that you choose, it doesn't have to be anything like this. It could be one of the other ones. Try and see what smaller shapes you see inside the bigger one, or the biggest, and we'll set it up from there. Now, the other point I want to bring up as far as the dimension or the size of the animal is that... I didn't draw it very small, so it's only in the center of the page. And I also didn't make it take up all to the edges. I wanted it to take almost three quarters of the page because our dot art is gonna go around the outside. And then what I thought was, um, I pulled up some Aboriginal symbols that I'll share with you next week that we could decorate the very corners with. So we wanna leave a little bit of space around those edges so that you'll have space to work when we go ahead in and add the colorful part and the dots, okay? So I just wanted to share that with you. So I really hope that you this helps you get started on your way. And I also hope that you enjoy this style of art. To be honest with you, this part, this art is really important um, in my life because it was something I was surrounded by. My, we had a family friend who is from Australia and my mom discovered that she knew people who made this type of art. And so we had a couple of pieces of this art hanging up in my home. And I always loved it because it tended to look a little different than a lot of the artwork that I had ever seen, both in school and like if I went to the museum, I didn't always see something like this. It was unique and it really opened my eyes that there are so many different kinds of styles of art. And it also seems like something that I could do as a kid. You know, I was like, oh, I can, I can make dots, I could do that. So I liked that aspect. And then you'll see, and I'll talk a little bit more about this next week, in the Abor Aboriginal symbols that we will eventually add that I'll show you in next week's slideshow, uh, a lot of the themes are togetherness and community in these um, paintings and these symbols. So I loved that combined with obviously the nature aspect of um, animals and things like that, looking at the things around us or that we would be around us if we were in Australia. So I hope that you enjoyed this beginning of the journey. And again, if you could please hang on to those sketches and your outlines this week, 
And then next week we will continue on with our next um, steps for this. So thanks so much for joining me and I hope to see you soon.